let me show you something that will surprise you genesis 25 <laughs> no matter what you give anybody you seek to succeed you you have not truly blessed them if you tr if you do not transfer the mantle the spirit the unction and teach them the secrets of maintaining it you don't only transfer mantles and anointings you must teach them your secret with God that kept it please pay attention we're about to pray now Genesis 25 the entire text is from verse 1 to 11 but we may jump a few places for time's sake follow carefully I'll begin my reading then again Abraham took a wife remember this was when Sarah passed on the Bible says they brought him another woman called Keturah verse 2 and she bare him Zimran Jokshan Midian Midian and all those names verse 3 in total Abraham had about eight children that we know six from Keturah and then one from Sarah and then one from Hagar are we together verse 4 now okay he's just talking about let's jump to verse 5 I'm saving time the Bible says everybody please read it one to read does this look like something you saw in the parable remember uh, in the the story of um, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac verse 6 but to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had he gave what wow abraham gave all that he had to the one he knows is a son of covenant and promise but to the rest he called them and gave them gifts and sent away from isaac his son the bible says while he yet lived eastward unto the east country read seven and these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived a hundred and three score and fifteen years jump to 11 please verse 11 and it came to pass after that the de after the death of Abraham that God blessed how many what of the rest how many sons did you read that he had and now the Bible says after Abraham died God bless his son Isaac what of the rest what did he give Isaac that he did not give the rest hmm. Genesis 26 from verse 12 please give us New King James Version if we can find that Genesis 26 and verse 12 there was something Abraham gave Isaac that the rest did not have the Bible says he gave them gifts, but to Isaac he gave all that he had. Everyone, please read with me. We're reading from verse 12, and then I will continue. Ready? One to read. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that same year. And the Lord, he did not sow that same year because he was the only one who sowed. Many people sowed just like him. But what was on his head was now controlling what was around his life. Verse 13. Be patient and read. One to read. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very... What was on his head brought him what he had now in 14. Go to 14. What did he have? Of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants so the philistines he gave his sons gifts but he gave this boy a mantle he said this is all that made me me go with it you may go empty but you cannot remain empty with this on your head verse 15 we're reading to 16 i'm saying this because this night something is going to come upon your life 
in the name of Jesus Christ now the Philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father and they had filled them with earth verse 16 it says Abimelech said to Isaac go away from us for you are much mightier that means there is something you can receive while you are receiving it your hand is still empty your bank account is still empty but destiny begins to rejoice and say you got something you got something more than money you got something more than relationships you got something more than a name i reserve this to be the last because there are few people who ever receive this hear me whether for men of god or business people or captains of industry this is the mystery behind the inability for sons to reproduce what is on their fathers they are looking for physical things but they never cease to carry that one factor ah, i sense an anointing already he gave Isaac all that he had. Genesis 27, please. Genesis 27, we're about to pray. Please be sensitive. Genesis 27, we'll begin our reading from verse 1. We'll read 1 to 7. Everybody, please watch. Please, let me have your attention. Don't be distracted. If you are distracted with this story, it's an attack. Just listen carefully. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said, Behold, here am I. We're reading to seven. He said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Next verse. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field and take me some venison next verse and make me savory meat such as i love and bring it unto me that i may eat that my soul may bless thee before i die verse 5 and rebecca heard when isaac spake to esau his son and esau went to the field to hunt for venison and bring and to bring it verse 6 and Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son saying behold I heard thy father speak to Esau thy brother saying bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless you before the that bless you before the Lord before my death now jump for sake of time to verse 18 I want to show you a very deep mystery the highest form of inheritance that can be transferred and he came unto his father and said my father and he said here am i this is jacob now who art thou my son and jacob lied to his father i am esau thy firstborn i have done according as thou badest me arise i pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. He's lying, you know, as advised by his mother. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. Reading to 29, 22. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy and his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. 24. Look at, he said, Are thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. Watch this now. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine. 
and he and he drank 26 and his father said unto him come near now and kiss me my son 27 and he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said see the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord had blessed 28 therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine next verse let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee he said be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons oh 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 bow down to thee cursed be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee verse 30 and it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made the end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out of the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came from his hunting watch this and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and Isaac his father said unto him who art thou and he said I am thy son thy firstborn Esau 33 and Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said who where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me and I have eaten of all before thou camest and I have blessed him and yea he shall be blessed it's a law I've released it already now watch this 34 when Esau heard the words of his father the Bible says he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and he said unto his father bless me even me also my father verse 35 and he said thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away where is the blessing and how do you take it away because he did not carry any physical thing is it not just to speak couldn't he speak again ah there is more to the realm of the spirit than you see how can a gentleman just cry a matured adult crying and the father said sorry so it's not about repeating words there was something that had already come on jacob let's finish to 36 and he said is not he rightly named jacob for he had supplanted me these two times number one he took away my birthright and behold now he had taken away my blessing and he said has thou not reserved a blessing for me even one can i tell you this believe me when i tell you what is on your head is what controls what is around your life there are many people who ha whose hands are full but their heads are empty and easily what is in your hands can evaporate real inheritance is not the physical things you carry the conviction of the one before you the name that he gives you the relationships that he gives you the physical assets which is the least and then the greatest is the mantle and the grace that turn him you will hear the stories of people especially in the body of Christ you will hear a man of God tell you when God called me I could not even speak English and today he has a ministry around the world brothers and sisters it takes more than hard work there are spiritual forces that may have come to partner with such a person there are people who came to this Abuja they did not have up to 100 naira but their mama sent them from the village saying i don't have money but i once helped missionaries in 1971 and they said may my children be blessed my son go with this blessing and that gentleman will carry a box looking like an arm robber 
and as soon as he steps in Abuja the forces of the spirit start mobilizing themselves hear me this is why some people do not fear it is not what is on their hand it is what is on their head that yea I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil hear me when I tell you I am a product of many anointings this is what I mean I have secured the blessing the sworn blessing of many people hold on do you see why they took Jesus to the temple immediately he was born they took him to the temple and met Anna the prophetess she spoke over him met Simeon the prophet spoke over him they said now Jesus you can go we, we guarantee you will succeed was our father in the Lord Bishop David Oyedepo who said he was somewhere in the US and the Lord cut short his meeting and said return back and make my people rich he didn't give them any physical money but he came back with an anointing that he can declare and say be blessed and you will hear that somebody did not apply for a job and yet they called him because thou anointest my head with oil but I see the results of my cup you don't anoint my cup you anoint my head but it's my cup that runs over listen believe me sometimes i wish i have the liberty to share testimonies but in many regards it will sound like arrogance i remember years ago a man of god prayed a prayer for me i met that man and i greeted him and i prayed an elderly man and he just said a prayer i i i i, I was it, it took a long time to say amen because he laid hands on me and he said apostle he said may God create a problem that only you can solve I said ah no why I'm somebody who is for the body I don't like all these kinds of things how can a man pray that kind of prayer you've heard my story that I was in just many years ago and I went to go and buy sugar cane listen true story and there were two old women who were trying to buy I think sugar cane it was no more than hundred naira I pleaded with them I said, you are my parents I'm your child please give me the privilege of paying for you they said no I said let me pay and when I paid they began to bless me and one of the women blessed me in Hausa she said my son forever walk upon gold men are not just made by circumstances there are spiritual investments that men carry I've shared with you my stories of my encounters with the mantles upon God's generals. I don't just come and make empty noise. No. Now you understand what happened when Jesus appeared to me. I've shared with you my story. When he appeared to me, he never gave me anything physical, but he stretched his hands and light from the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that light entered into me, that sort of power and that sort of grace please help them i came here tonight to redefine inheritance for you inheritance is not cars and houses no that is the least inheritance is not just estates you have not helped your son let me tell you if the only thing you give him is a car and a house armed robbers can steal the car they can demolish the house but can you give something that cannot rust cannot be destroyed hear me he gave the remaining children gifts 
but he gave Isaac everything he had and yet there was no Isaac carrying a truckload calling a truck there are many young people who have been praying for their parents to die Lord let them die so I can get the two bedroom flat don't insult your destiny what was upon your father that made him to never beg that's what you should look for not three bedroom flats not two bedroom flats there are shamefully I say it with all due respect there are siblings and family members fighting for years and decades over mundane properties not knowing that if you receive what made the men themselves you can change the tides there are people today who do not see eyeball to eyeball this car is for me this house is for me that is the least of it we're about to pray I came tonight full of the spirit I want to release something from my spirit believe me help them honestly I came from the depth of my spirit that something will be placed upon your head that will so turn your life around we're wrapping up two keys for receiving from fathers let me give you two biblical keys you want to receive from a father a spiritual father a physical father a financial father a political father any kind of father there are two keys number one the first key that controls receiving from fathers is honor the first key you will never this is why our generation of young men do not succeed because we have institutionalized this honor we see it as a thing of pride young people who have not produced anything they've not raised anybody they've not changed any life but we can sit down and mark the scripts of fathers and dare to criticize every father deserves your honor even if you see their nakedness the bible says noah's sons they saw their nakedness and one called his brothers to come and laugh even though he was drunk when he got up he knew they were looking at him there are some things that are there and the other one moved backwards and covered him and he got up and cursed some of the sons two keys number one honor malachi chapter one we'll read six to eight fire is going to fall here right now malachi chapter one from verse six to eight he says a son honored his father and a servant his master if then i be a father where is mine honor and if i be a master where is my fear saith the lord god of hosts O priest that despise my name and ye say wherein have we despised your name we're reading to eight ye offer polluted bread upon my altar and ye say wherein have we polluted thee in that ye say the table of the lord is contemptible verse 8 and if ye shall offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil and if ye offer the lame and the sick is it not evil offer it now to your governor will it be pleased with him or accept thy person say the lord of hosts can i tell you this do you know why jacob isaac already had flocks but he said the one i want to eat is the one you go and get not the one at the back of the house why would he have flocks and herds and now tell his son carry your weapons of war i want the one that came from your effort place value on it let me eat let your honor for me turn to joy because that blessing from my spirit is only released through joy there are many children today who are carrying curses from their parents not demons because they've spent their lives causing pain to their parents sometimes we ship all kinds of things in the name of westernization and you see children insult their parents insult any kind of person and I, I, i'm saying this respectfully speaking 
young people whether in this country or across africa this is one of the mysteries behind the hard life of young people we have no honor at all for parents not just physical parents anybody can get up and just insult anybody no you will carry courses in successions we read it already genesis 27 when you read from verse 3 and 4 he said make me venison such that i love make me venison from your weapons of war honor is not just about giving money or giving seeds but let me tell you this as a person and as a principal you will never see me go and stand before any of our fathers of faith in this nation or any of any great mentor or father whether in business whether in whatever area I won't sit down and say I'm a great man Apostle Joshua Selman I understand this law when I honor I honor from the depth of my heart there are many pastors today you can lie down and hold the legs of a man of God and never receive jack because it comes through honor you can even kneel down and still be standing up in your heart it's not about all of this pretense and this this hypocrisy people do genuine heartfelt honor is the reason why you see great people hardly reproduce themselves everything God gives a great man it is supposed to be for everyone who is interested but very few people do you know that there are many homes like I told you the biological children of the man and his wife don't seem to carry their grace and then you will see one stranger who maybe came to squat the person who communicates honor is the one who carries the mantle learn it from tonight let honor be a culture husbands honor your wives you don't honor your wife your prayer will not be answered the Bible said that wives honor your husbands don't say he looked for me what does that mean children honor your parents Bring in all this westernization and you will punish your future in a way that you cannot imagine parents also respectfully speaking honor your children because there are things through their life that you may not have seen that god is revealing help this woman i'm seeing oil coming on her the first key for receiving from fathers fathers here does not just mean men alone those who have gone ahead is honor genuine honor how many pastors today talk about their leaders their overseers their, they gossip about them tear them down and then come up yes sir how are you sir that's the reason why no impartation works because the honor is not genuine how many business people how many people in corporations they sit down and tear their superiors insult them and talk all kinds of things and see them out CEO sir God bless you he can cut cake for you and you can eat but that is it but there can be others who will say look I know this man is not perfect but I choose to honor him whatever granted him grace to come to Abuja here and in five years he has become this I stand with understanding and I know and one day he can look at you and say I bless you or you will say let me tell you a story in 1971 my father died in 1972 my mother died in 1973 all my helpers died so how did you become great that is what is leading you to and a two-hour conversation will become a six-hour of conversation in that office and at the end of it you will say I met one missionary who just said a prayer and I want to pray that prayer for you. Sometimes you see our father in the Lord that is you. He will ask everybody to stand up. See, just because people don't tell you, anointings are like addresses. You can know where they came from. When you see extraordinary results happening for people, please let me tell you this. Look beyond the physical frame. There are people who is a combination of strange mantles and anointings upon their heads.
Hallelujah. When Papa Idahosa was alive, according to God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, he would tell you that one time he came to him and delivered something and he gave him an opportunity to pick some money and he said, no, if I remember correctly, he said, no, 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 what I want is that blessing. And he told him, kneel down. He said, from tonight, I impart upon you the grace of on time that before any need arises, the answer comes. And he received it. When God grant me the grace and the privilege to lie down and pray alone in Daddy Joe's prayer room, I was not praying and saying, God bless me, give me tea, give me bread. I would be stupid to pray that kind of prayer. I laid down there and one of the things I prayed, I said, Lord, the covenant of answered prayer of many fathers who have gone, that you have placed upon this man, that he can speak casually and shift the climate of nations. May that same grace come upon me. I shared with you my story when we went to Ekiti State and I saw people dying at 130 something, 140 something, 150 something. I said, no, there has to be a grace here. When we were done preaching years ago, I now came back and we stopped at a house where someone, 136, he just died. I said, please look for the oldest man here so that we can receive this grace for long life. There were hardly people there who could speak English. Eventually, we got somebody who could speak limited English. And they took us to one man, old man. And we said, we are men of God. We just want him to speak over our lives. And he looked at me and smiled and said, kneel down. Those who carry this thing know they have it all. Let me tell you, those who carry it, they know they have it. You don't stand before people as colleagues and receive mantles. No, mantles don't honor, don't, don't respond to colleague mentality. Oh, I used to know this one. And as they prayed, I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. I now honored him, gave him a seed. And when we were going to go and enter the car, thanking the women who we asked initially, I just saw one of the women and they said that was the wife of this senior um, the man of God this veteran that had gone they now do you know that the woman was in her hundreds and yet she was standing strong no stick no nothing I said what is this I said let's go back home if he's dead she's still alive in him two have become one the woman tapped me and said come she opened the room and started showing me the pictures that was the wife of his youth i hope you know those days they used to marry as teenagers that woman had stayed with him till his final days and then i said since this man is dead and he died serving the lord they should tell her that please they've prayed for us but i want prayer from her the woman said i should kneel down and she removed both of her shoes she stood on bare foot and prayed for more than 15 minutes in Yoruba. I don't know what she was saying. All I know is that there was a mantle. I returned with speed to Zaria and I said, My people, I came with an anointing. Stand up. Let me release something upon you first. Hear me. Your possibilities are defined by the mantles that are upon you. One day, a man of God prayed for me and he said, Son, because of this apostolic grace upon your life, I impart upon you. I never knew there was such a grace. He said, I impart upon you the kingmaker anointing. You've heard me say it. Kingmakers never become the kings themselves, but they can enthrone and dethrone kings. So you can stand and speak over an ordinary man and say, May God lift you. And that grace would defy anything and place that person there. It's a grace. Number one, honor. Number two, service slash support. The second key for receiving from fathers is there must be a track record of service or supporting what they represent. 
Genesis 30, when you read from verse 26 to 30. Genesis 30, let's read very quickly. We're about to pray. Give me my wives, he said, Jacob now in the house of Laban, and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done unto you. Next verse. And Laban said unto him, listen carefully, pray thee, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry ye, for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake. Isaac went to the house of Laban and turned things around. And he said, appoint me my wages. Keep the scripture there. And I will give it. We are reading to 30, 29. And he said unto him, thou knowest how I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me. 30. Hmm. For it was little which thou hast before I came. And it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord had blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own household also? Listen. When you carry mantles upon your head, there are people who will give you jobs not because of any physical effort. Like Laban, they would have studied that anywhere this man sits down. Have you noticed that this man came into this business? Have you noticed that this man got a job into this parastatal and things began to change? It is not always about physical work. Read your Bible. The spiritual climates that you carry can define possibilities in your life. So you can hear people come and give you testimonies here. They are not stage managing it. We fear God. How does someone just come and sit down and then by a week later, his life just changes. The same way your life too is about to change this night.